we are finally to the large intestine. We are finally to the large intestine. So this is after the small intestine and we've already gone over the general functions of it, right? So we're gonna have um, some absorption, mostly water absorption occur here. We're gonna have some chemical digestion primarily by bacteria. bacteria. The role of these bacteria is, understanding of it is increasing all the time. Um, creation of feces, right? So defecation is, is the end. And the movement through the large intestine to compact that feces is the type of so propulsion. We're gonna have different names for that propulsion. Um, a little bit of mixing is gonna occur then, primarily with, with mucus. And along with water absorption, that's compaction um, of the feces. I've already labeled a few things for you here that you already know. I'm not gonna label every single thing on here. I wanna focus on the large intestine. Um, so this right here is gonna be our, um, don't jump in, so ileum of the small intestine. There is a valve that connects the small intestine, the ileum to the cecum. The cecum is this portion of the large intestine right here. This is going to be the ileocecal valve or sphincter. It's a sphincter. You can call it whichever one you want. There's a lot of sphincters in the digestive system. So if you want to think of it as call it a sphincter, that's fine. Um, this little thing off of here, that's our appendix, kind of unknown function thought to be immune, um, immune function storage of bacteria. Um, that actually is a, a health, a source of recolonization. If you have a bacterial deficit, can obviously become a problem if it becomes infected. So this rest of this colon here has, has names to it that um, make a lot of sense. We've got an ascending portion, and I'm gonna do this in a different color. And I'll also star here the parts that are new, that are parts of the large intestine. Um, ascending colon, the, the food, the chyme is moving up, it's ascending. Across this way, we've got transverse. I'm gonna label it right here. Transverse means across. And then we've got a descending colon. Right, this entire descending part, the feces is moving down. This little turn right here is a sigmoid, is the sigmoid colon. Then that's the end of the colon. We've got um, the rectum and the anus. Anal canal is the canal that leads to the anus. Okay, so that's, I believe, all of the anatomy, almost all the anatomy. So anal canal is that bit right there. Um, one other feature you'll see on this large intestine is like lumps, right? These are called hostra, um, hostrum. Um, let me draw those for you. So these are the bumps right here. Did I spell that wrong? Yes, hostrum. One type of movement through the large intestine is hostral contractions. So it's contractions of these hostrum. That's the only reason I personally care about it. Um, we will talk about the sphincters that are down here in a little bit. There are two sets of anal sphincters. And I believe that will be the anatomy you'll need to know. Here's the histology. I'm not gonna focus a lot on it. Um, similar, same layers as the rest of your digestive system, right? But 
doesn't, so those features we talked about in the other organs, rugae in the stomach, villi in the small intestine are not here, right? There are um, glands here that secrete fluid and mucus is a big, a big thing. All these little white cells are mu goblet cells, mucus producing cells. So although chemical enzymes, digestive enzymes are not produced in these pits here, a lot of mucus is. Um, and that's going to mix with your chyme and eventually become feces. This all takes um, in the small intestine about three to five hours. And then in the large intestine can take up to 24 hours to, to pass through there. And a lot of that is, is water absorption. Okay. I have some terms I want to tell you. I will do that now, since I have um, this information here. So water absorption, we'll talk a little bit about separately. Chemical digestion via bacteria, we'll talk about separately. And defecation, we'll talk about separately. I wanna talk on this video about propulsion through the, the large intestine, that the motility. Um, one thing that happens first to, to get from the small intestine to the large intestine. So at this point right here, this sphincter or valve, this is going to be um, actually stimulated by gastrin. Remember gastrin? Gastrin stimulates ileal motility and starts to relax that sphincter. As the chyme passes through into the large intestine, um, that backward pressure helps prevent backflow. So that's kind of how it, it's, it's much less hormonally regulated um, going from the small intestine to the large intestine, but stimulated by gastric um, activity initially. And then just kind of the movement through is gonna prevent further flow through. It's a kind of a self-regulating process. It's probably actually more complicated than that. Um, So this, that is called the gastroileal reflex. This right here, the promotion of um, digestive activity in the stomach, gastrin, to um, open, to enhance ileal motility and open the sphincter. That is our gastroileal reflex. And what this reflex is going to mean for us is that because of this reflex, by the time you eat your lunch and by the time your lunch is out of your stomach and out of your small intestine, um, it is out of there before you eat your dinner. Your lunch is completely emptied from your stomach and small intestine by dinner time. And that's partially because of that gastroiliac reflex, il ileal reflex. Once the chyme is in the large intestine, I'm going to do a different color from motility here, let's do green as in go. We've got peristalsis. to move the matter through. We also have something similar to segmentation that's called the hostral contraction. Very similar idea to segmentation, which means what? It's going to allow for some mixing, right? That's what um, segmentation does. So there's a little bit of, of each of those. The other way to move stuff through the large intestine is mass movements. So this is the third type of movement. This is what it sounds like, movements of mass amounts of stuff. This happens 
um, less often, very strong waves that actually occur up at the transverse colon, um, beginning up there, and only occur like three to four times a day, either when you eat or afterwards. Um, this is a huge increase in motility in the large intestine. All this motility, right, is because of the muscles, um, the muscles around the large intestine. These mass movements often correspond to defecation. Um, so three to four bowel movements a day is fairly normal. Not everyone um, actually does this, but that would be related. <laughs> 